to AFTV in association with Angerati. I'm joined now by the Honourable John Jinnapur, who is the Deputy Minister of Power for Ghana. Minister, thank you for being here. Thanks for making the time out of your busy schedule. And uh, just as a starting point, can, can you give us a, a, a quick update, a, a, a sort of brief overview about the, the, uh, the power sector within Ghana at this point in time? Well, thank you very much. It's a privilege having the opportunity to interact with you. Uh, Ghana, our vision is to ensure that we have reliable supply of energy. Our vision is to ensure that we move into an energy economy where we can provide adequate, reliable supply of energy, but at a competitive price. And so we have been undertaking some reforms to ensure that we attain that objective. Currently, Ghana's installed capacity stands at about 4,000 and our peak demand stands at about 2,500. The challenge for us has to do with climate and hydrology. We depend on hydro, about half of the generation capacity comes from hydro, but because of the low water levels and the low hydrology, it's affected us a bit. But we are taking steps to bridge that. We are doing whatever we can to diversify our energy mix. We have hydro base, we have thermal base, and we've promulgated uh, laws and initiatives in order to ensure that we bring on more renewables and so far that is proven to be quite positive. And so we are confident that we shall become a next exporter of energy. We discovered uh, oil and gas in June 2007 and our primary objective has been to ensure that we use the gas base in order to fire our thermal plant. And so we'll be moving into a gas based energy economy in the years ahead. And that is what we have been working around the clock. We're also encouraging the private sector to invest in Ghana. And that has been very, very uh, remarkable. That has been very, very positive. Today, we have so much uh, energy coming out of the private sector investment in Ghana. And so we shall continue to undertake reforms to ensure that we create the enabling environment. So, for the so private you're, sector. You're, uh, uh, you've mentioned it a couple of times that you're, uh, you're undertaking reforms and you're going to continue to undertake reforms. Is that necessarily because the power sector is moving in such a dynamic way? You know, the, the price points of renewables are changing. You know, are the reforms necessary to keep up with that, or is there a more systemic issue that the reforms need to address? We've realized that the private sector would want you to create a enabling environment, would want you to give them the atmosphere that is conducive for them to invest. In order to do so, you must undertake some reforms. Uh, earlier on, or here too, we had only one state-owned company investing in the generation subsector. In the early 90s, we took a decision to deregulate the generation subsector. And today we have a Sogle, we have Senate, we have Send Power, we have Car Power, uh, we have a Mary, we have so many companies coming in to generate so that we can create that competition. And in order to do that, you must have the regulatory framework and the needed atmosphere for them to operate. Uh, in addition to that, we are also deregulating the distribution subsector, which is key in the power supply chain. Because if the distributor is credible, if the distributor is strong, it means that it has a backward effect on the other generation companies. Well, it's one of those key issues that almost kind of doesn't get talked about but needs to get talked about because there's no point having all this generation capacity if you can't distribute it, if you can't evacuate the power. And a number of uh, 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 commentators have been saying that actually it's, it, it, it needs to be a parallel track. The, the investment into the distribution sector needs to be mirroring and if not ahead of some of the power uh, generation sector. Indeed, you rightly put it. It, ought, it even ought to be ahead of, not even parallel. Because once you have a good distribution sector, it gives investors the confidence. And when investors are sure that when they invest, they would get their money back and their returns, it pulls them. And so you rather need a vibrant, efficient, responsive distribution sector. The off-taker ought to be credible. That the off-taker can pay for the power that it consumes. And so for me, it's important that we reform the off-taker. It's important that we have a distribution sector that is responsive to the needs and aspirations of the generation sector. Once we do that, it creates that synergy and then it pulls people. So what's your vision for the reforms around the distribution sector? I know they probably haven't happened, but you must have some sort of roadmap that says, uh, look, 
here, here are maybe a couple of big things that we need to do and that will give us a you either go down the road of a, of a distribution market and you, and you break distribution networks up or, 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 or you keep it as a, a sort of monopoly because that gives you economies of scale. You know, where are you going with that? We've made quite some progress. We've signed on to the compact with uh, the Millennium Challenge Corporation and they are investing about $500 million into the energy sector. Now, as part of that program, what we are doing is that we want the private sector to invest some money as well into the distribution sub-sector and run the distribution company. And so today we have gone far ahead with those reforms. We've had companies that have expressed interest. We've shortlisted the companies. We've moved from the RFQ stage and now we are at the RFP stage. And so we are almost there and we expect that by the end of 2017, we should fully get the concession on. We've decided that we want the company to run ECG, which is the primary uh, distributor in Ghana with about 3 to 3.5 million customers. And so once we do that, we set KPIs, we set benchmarks for that company to meet and also invest and reduce losses, bring about efficiency and also respond to the needs of the consumers. So we've made quite some progress yeah, it's, 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 so, so the KPIs are, are around, it's going to be an efficient distribution network. Certainly. You, you can't have a huge amount of losses. Certainly. The point of Certainly. That. Uh, so, so if you were to uh, give uh, uh, an advice, because you, you're, you, you know, you're, you're in the thick of this, uh, uh, what would you say are the sort of two or three key KPIs that need to happen for a distribution network uh, uh, operator in order for this uh, sort of commercial uh, arrangement to work? The first thing in my opinion is to reduce the losses. You can have a distribution sector that has the losses of about 23%. Is that where we are at now? Yes, Ghana, you right? simply cannot break even. If you buy power, sell the power, and only recoup about 70%, how do you pay for that power? And so the first thing is to reduce the losses. Two is to improve the efficiency itself in terms of the technical specs. People should not be having outages. Consumers should have confidence in the distributor. The responsiveness of the distributor to the needs of the consumer is also important. So it's not just about reducing losses and collecting monies, but it's also about bringing efficiency so that the person paying for the money feels happy with the power that he or she is purchasing. If we can work on these two alone, it gives us a lot of leverage and a lot of improvement. And as we're coming to the end of the time, the final uh, thing is uh, not you, but some commentators have been saying that uh, you know a, a long-term vision for Ghana is to be an energy hub, and uh, and I think that is maybe born out of the fact that there are a lot more interconnectors at play, and, and countries are seeing that. Hang on a minute, uh, you know, if you've got hydro there, and I've got a lot of wind or sun or gas or whatever it is, it makes sense for us to have maybe more of a combined energy strategy. Uh, you know, is, is that sort of vision true? Is that manifesting itself on the ground? You know, are, is there also a uh, sort of cross-border energy view rather than just a country specific? No, we have a West African power pool and the essence of the West African power pool is to bring all the countries within the sub-region into one unit so that we work together. And so today we are exchanging power with Cote d'Ivoire, we are exchanging power with Benin, we are exchanging power with Togo, we are exchanging power with Burkina. And so we are making progress and we are strengthening our transmission systems onto a common grid so that we can all hook onto each other and distribute power. And so in as much as we believe that we must have self-sufficiency when it comes to energy, we are even more convinced that we must integrate each other's economies, especially from an energy perspective. And that is why we invested in the West Afghan gas pipeline all the way from Nigeria to Ghana with the intention of extending it to La Côte d'Ivoire so that we can share resources. And so we believe strongly that without integrating, we simply cannot make it. And actually that integration, that energy integration, is one of the byproducts of that is also stability and things like that. If, if you're interdependent, you know, it, it, it does create more stability and that harmony and then more that investors is. come in. Uh, so uh, if I give you a final word, you've been at AEF for uh, two days now on uh, uh, a pretty historic time considering the results we've had in London, uh, in uh, Britain today. Uh, what have, uh, what's been your highlight while you've been here? 
I think that we've learned a lot. Uh, if not for anything, most of the ministers, when we met, we decided that going back, we have to organize a meeting of all West African power ministers so we can sit and look at the progress we've made, take stock, and continue to push for reforms and continue to integrate. But Burkina Faso wants to evacuate power from Ghana. In fact, we are distributing power even at the distribution level in Burkina Faso. Cote d'Ivoire wants to supply more power to us. Burkina, uh, Togo wants to take more power from us. We are working on a hydro dam with Togo together. It also bolsters peace and security amongst ourselves. So when we share resources, it means that we take care of those resources together. And so this has been a very, very good forum. It's given us the opportunity to interact. It's given us the opportunity to bring to the fore the key challenges confronting us. But more importantly, we are going back determined to work together and to foster and garner the resources so that we can work to increase electricity capacity in the sub-region. Minister, that's a great place to leave it <laughs> Thank on. You. Thank you. Thank you for Thank watching you. as well.